What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Yap Sesh. It's a beautiful morning. It's Thursday. We're almost at the end of the week. Pretty nice day out. Apologies in advance. We got a guy next door who's fucking blowing leaves everywhere. Uh, so apologies if you hear that. But hope you guys had a great Wednesday last night. I actually went up some fat units. I'm excited to recap the card because a lot went my way yesterday. A lot's been going my way with the fluke shit. Uh, which you never see. You never see me on the right side of fluke shit. Um, but what a slate of games it was yesterday. NBA, NHL playoffs. Knicks minus four and a half. We finally got one to go in the hoop with the Knicks covering that spread. Dude, the Pacers are so frustrating uh, to watch. And Siakam, I just got to call him out. He's such a bitch, dude. How is this guy not dropping 20 points per game in the playoffs? Uh, dude, had 10 at half. Took maybe one shot in the third quarter, finished with 14. I'm tired of the inconsistency from these fuckers, dude. I, I can't wait for these ratchet teams to finally get out of the playoffs so I can stop losing money on them. Uh, but shout out the Knicks for finally covering. Uh, what's his name? Fucking Halliburton finally decides to shoot the rock. He scores like 30 points, I fucking bet. Uh, the day we don't take him, the score, I, I literally bet. That's just how it goes in the NBA. Uh, but finally, we got one to go in with the Knicks. I know Knicks fans are bricked up. I gotta ask New York fans before I continue, when's the last time you guys have been this bricked up? You got the Knicks up 2-0, you got the Rangers up 2-0. In my lifetime, I can't recall when the last time New York has been this on top. Maybe when the Yankees won the World Series or the Giants won the Super Bowl, but it feels like decades ago since that's been the case. So I know New York fans gotta be on top right now. Uh, if you're a New York fan in the comments, let me know how you're feeling about your two teams killing it in the playoffs. Uh, Panthers and Reg, after that first Bruins goal, dude, I was about to hang it up with this series, man. I was going to start nuking the Bruins. Uh, I really thought they were about to steal another game at home or uh, on the road in uh, fucking Carolina. But, or not Carolina, Jesus, Florida. Uh, but the Panthers ended up clapping cheeks, dude, bending them over and winning 6-1. to one. Didn't even need to take in reg. We could have took the puck line for plus chick, uh, but it doesn't matter. Should have, would have, could have. Panthers, even the series up 1-1, going back to Boston. Uh, Ws. How about them fucking Canucks, boys? I know you guys had Oilers money line, and I'm not trying to say I'm sharp, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but that, that probably stung a bit, going to bed last night, or even waking up this morning and finding out they fucking blew that lead. Three goal lead. What's up with three goal leads this year? Uh, teams has not been able to hold on to it. Um, but the Canucks, listen, I wasn't watching too many sports last night because uh, my girlfriend's going on a fucking work trip and I had to go you know, hang out with her before she left today. Uh, so put the phone away for a bit. Didn't watch hardly much of uh, any of these games last night. So I have no idea how the fuck the Canucks pulled that shit off. But I was score app watching uh, and I was so bricked up, dude. I could not believe it. Um, so shout out the Canucks for stealing game one. That line was way too sketchy. Minus 130 for the Oilers in the playoffs against the Ratchet Knucks. Surely that pays, right? Uh, no, it did not. Speaking of insane comebacks, boys, Real Madrid yesterday. Someone on Twitter asked me, I got to know what prompted you to take Real Madrid. You never bet on soccer. You're right. I never do. But it was like 2 o'clock. I was bored as shit. Um, and I needed a nuke. I needed something to hammer because I was getting the itch uh, and the slate didn't start for like four more hours and I saw this game had like 30 minutes left and so I was like, fuck it, let me tap into some pitch cake, all right? I lock in Real Madrid money line. I shit you not, within seconds of me posting it on Twitter, Bayern Munich scores a goddamn goal. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And the DMs were unlike anything I've ever had happen to me before. Like. Within instant, just a barrage of DMs coming at me. Uh, and I'm like, dude, holy fuck. I really just pissed off the whole soccer world. And then they score. And I celebrate on the Twitter feed. And everyone's like, man, man, you don't even know that it's only 90 minute line. You still lost, bozo. I'm like, well, we still got time for a miracle. Sure enough, bang. Two to one. Madrid bangs at home. I'm splooging all over the feed. Everybody owes me an apology. I might be the king of the pitch, boys, after that shit. How the fuck did that happen? Uh, I don't know, but anybody who had that under, I feel for you, bro. I feel for you, because how the hell did that 
not go under uh, with zero goals with 70 minutes into the game. Crazy. Um, baseball recap chat, I got to lay it out here. I'm done. I'm done with Cookie Craig. I don't know how this dude still laces up the cleats every day and gets a paycheck in the mail. I genuinely just can't wrap my head around it. It's like he's just auditioning every team he goes to to why he's going to blow your team up come playoffs. And then I don't know what these teams are seeing. Oh, yeah, we need a guy. Let's go get Cookie Craig, dude. That's exactly what our bullpen needs. What? Every time this dude comes in, he's a fucking liability. Anytime there's a guy on base, he gets rattled, and you can just go ahead and chalk whatever run line you're sweating for the Orioles, because as soon as he comes in, it's over. The Phillies fans know it. The Dodgers fans certainly know it. I'm done. I'm done. And the Orioles fans are now starting to get a taste of it, too. Blowing two saves to the Oakland A's last week, nearly costing them another game yesterday against the moose shit Nationals, when is it going to stop with this fucker, dude? I need a sip of this Yappuccino. By the way, I got to say, uh, Einstein bros, pretty fucking mid. What's your favorite go-to breakfast spot in the comments? I need to know, guys. <clears throat> Jesus. I need to know. Um, Shug's Bagels in Dallas. Oh, geez, no. If you don't know about Shug's Bagels in Dallas, just hang them up. Just hang them up. Einstein bros, mid. Um, Orioles, dog shit, fucking Cookie Craig, get him out of the fucking league, I'm begging, I'm begging. He's costing absolute wagon teams like the Dodgers, the Phillies, now the Orioles, all wagons that sports bettors love to hammer. He's costing us units year after year. It's time to retire and move on, my guy. There's got to be somebody better out there that you can pick up to, to fill the spot. I don't know why he continues to get innings. It, it just blows my mind. Um, and the Mariners, dude, I got to be fucking out on this team. Every time I take them lately, they haven't been coming through. They came through quite often for me when I was in Belize and last week as well. But the last couple of games, I swear, dude, they don't score more than three runs max a game. Like, you won't see a four, five, six, seven, eight uh, run explosion from this team. I haven't seen it in months. Uh, so I'm pretty out on the M's, bro. But we might be going back to that game, but not the Mariners ML. And uh, that PP yesterday... It was looking good for a second, of course. That's how, that's how they all look. Uh, Swayman, I mean, six goals, brother. What the fuck? I'm pretty sure he got pulled anyways. Um, JT Miller scored a goal on one shot. Can't make it up. Siakam, I'm done with inconsistent bozos. Stick to what you know in the NBA playoffs, all right? Siakam, we don't know he's going to show up. He hasn't shown us one time that he's going to. Dude, giving us Shug's bagels in the first half every fucking game. Uh, and George Kirby, oh my God. I didn't even rant about why the Mariners were such a shit bet. I haven't seen quite a turkey fest like I had with George Kirby last night. It was solo shot after solo shot after solo shot. I think it was four home runs he gave up. All solo shots. Uh, that dude was just silver platter turkeys. Um, so GG's, the Twins were just all Barry Bonds yesterday. Speaking of Barry Bonds, what Shea Bangaliers did yesterday, I didn't even write this down in my notes, but I just remembered. What is going on with Shea Bangaliers, boys? He was a single away from the cycle. I don't even know how he performed in the game two. They had a double header yesterday, but I know he hit another home run. That dude just goes on the most random spurts of all time, uh, but he's one of my favorite players, uh, Shea Bangaliers, goaded. Uh, I got some plays for you guys today. Six plays across all three sports. A six-man PP entry, that's got to hit, dude. I haven't hit one since that miracle Mega Max day that uh, I made like 30K. It's time to hit one. It's time to lock in. Um, I'm also going to the Stars Avs game tonight, so I'll get there in a second. But, uh, and then a quick Q&A from some goats on Twitter who asked me some questions. Uh, so let's get to the plays, boys. Let me get a quick sip of a Yappuccino. Quick sip, quick grip. And shout out to the homies who are throwing this on their TV, getting work done throughout the day. Uh, love that shit. Love when you guys post on Twitter, you guys watching it. Uh, so if you see this, post on Twitter your viewing experience for how you're watching today's episode of The Yap. I love interacting with you guys. Uh, so make sure to tag me in these tweets if you guys are posting them. Uh, somebody, a couple people did it yesterday. I was like, dude, that's awesome. We should do that more. 
Uh, all right, first first play of the day. Jewel rip first, though. I got Ninja in my DMs asking for the fades, bro, so let's give them to him. Celtics minus 12 and a half. I'm going right back to it. Right back to it. They covered with these last game. I don't expect anything different tonight. Boston is just too hard to play in. It's way too hard. Uh, I'm nuking it. Five U maxer. Um, you know, I will probably get off the Celtics spread once they go to Cleveland. But when the Celtics are at home, you don't bet against them. That's just rule number one. If they don't cover this, fuck it. Whatever. They covered last game. I'll break even with that with the Celtics. But we're running it back. I got to see the Cavs show me something, some sort of pulsage to, to get me to back them in some way or form. But we're still nuking the Celtics. You know exactly where I'm going. It's Mavs and OKC, and I'm nuking the Mavericks, boys. Have zero confidence in it. Absolute zero. They're going to lose this game by double digits, and I can't wait to lose $100 on it. Uh, last game, the Thunder, they were locked the fuck in the entire time. They are looking so great right now. They're meshing. SGA doesn't even need to go drop 30, but he still does. Um, I'm bricked up for this series, boys. I'm really concerned because I moved some things around, and, and now I'm going to courtside game six Thunder Mavs with Steve Will Do It, and I'm so fucking excited. I'm very concerned, though, because I'm afraid there might not even be a game six, fellas. But we'll get there. If we get there, we get there. If not, whatever. Hopefully we can run it back in the next series. But Mavericks money line, mandatory one unit maxer. Uh, yeah, I'm cursing the Mavericks until they fucking drown and piss. Next up, I don't care about cursing the stars. I'm not putting my rat shit units on them. You blow a 3-0 lead. I don't know how you come back from that. This Avs team is destined for another ring. They look fantastic. McKinnon hasn't even started ripping puck yet in this series. Uh, they haven't even seen the best of Nathan McKinnon yet. Me, Shelly, Lauren, we're going to the game tonight. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Me and Shelly are absolutely going to be hammering the abs. Um, and you know Lauren is going to be splooging for stars. So it's going to be some good content. Also, speaking of behind-the-scenes content, just got verified on Snapchat. I'm going to be posting a bunch of dumb shit behind the scenes at the game tonight. So go follow me on Snapchat. Book it with Trent. Uh, it's going to be great, all right? Um, but we're nuking the Avalanche again. You know I got that 30-unit Mega Max series bet, um, and we stole game one. Needed it. Needed it. Felt so good after that win. Let's go to the next game. The Hurricanes have got to win one at some point. They're going back to Carolina. Uh, they're minus 160, and I'm laying the juice, dude. I don't see this absolute wagon of a team going down this tragically, losing 3-0 in a series to the fucking Rangers, I bet. Give me the Canes. If they lose this game, I'll be in rat piss, bro. There's no way they're losing. They gotta win. They gotta fucking win. Uh, all right, let's go to the Diamond. My Diamond plays have been pretty rat shit lately. You know why? Because I've been getting too cute. I haven't been taking my, my wagons. If I would've just took Dodgers and Braves by two yesterday, I'd be in Cabo. But instead, I got cute with the fucking rat shit Mariners and Cookie Craig in Baltimore. Uh, but today, we got my goat Hunter Green pitching. Uh, we're going with Red's money line, pretty short line, minus 130. Um, but I think that he's going to shove. Remind me who the Reds are playing one more time. Oh, the rat shit D-backs. They got Sissoni on the mound. Who the fuck is that? He's got a 5 ERA. Don't care. Hunter Green is him. Uh, and we're backing him today. Reds money line at home. And I'm really sharp with these. Angels over 8.5. I know it's Detmer's day. But it's Bobby in LA, dude. You know Bobby's gonna be splooging all night. Um, and I don't even care about Detmer as having an absolute gem of a start. This bullpen is atrocious. Uh, Bobby Wick could go 0 for 4 in the first seven innings, and he'll probably hit a home run in the eighth when the bullpen comes in. Um, I, I really do think that this game is gonna be 6 to 4 in favor of the Royals. And so that game is gonna go over 8.5. I know Detmer's has been great. He's been a bit shaky as of recent, though, um, and I don't expect him to dial in tonight against the Royals. Uh, so I'm going with the Angels over eight and a half. Quick sip of this mid Yappuccino. All right, prize picks entry, boys. I got to dial the fuck in. I've been selling you guys short, costing you units if you're tailing. Can't be having that shit anymore. Stick to what you know works. Jason Tatum, 
He ain't scoring buckets like he used to because he doesn't need to, but he does do everything else. Rebounds and assists, soared over with ease last game, uh, and he hardly even played the fourth quarter. Um, you know, despite me being on Celtics minus 12 and a half, they're going to have to find a way to get that double-digit lead, and Tatum's going to be facilitating just like he was all game, grabbing boards and dishing the rock. Uh, hopefully, Jalen Brown can be the primary scorer again tonight and uh, get some passes from Tatum like he was last game. We're running back J-Dub in the OKC game, fantasy score this time. The only reason I took the PRA last game is because the fantasy score wasn't fucking up. Uh, and the fantasy score was what I always wanted to take instead of his goddamn PRA because he's always blocking shit. He's getting three steals a game. He's doing it all. Um, so we're going with J-Dub fantasy. How good is Jalen Williams for those that are just tapping into OKC? He's so fucking good, dude. What a steal in the draft uh, by Presti. And Presti has got to be the best GM in the NBA, potentially even sports, the way that he's built this franchise. All he needs is a fucking ring. Uh, so we move. I guarantee you, chat, last game on Tuesday, Ottinger was the taco. Curse of the century. Goes to overtime and gets hooked. You know that shit is soaring the fuck over today. This game is going to be, it's not going to be any blowout nearly like it was last game where they went up 3 0. Um, it's going to be close. I'm going to the game and it's more than likely that we're going to see overtime. I've gone to nine Stars games in my career. Sorry, 10 Stars games in my career. Nine of them have gone to overtime. The only one that didn't go to overtime was the last game we went to against the Oilers when the Stars won 5-0 to zero and I had the fucking over and the Oilers gave me a Shugs bagel. Um, but I'm telling you boys, Audings your saves. After everybody in the world chalked it last time, it's going to smack tonight and everybody's going to be off of it. Uh, and we're pairing that with a McKinnon shots. How can I go to the Stars game and not nuke McKinnon shots when I'm six rows in front of the glass, bro? I have to nuke McKinnon shots. I know he's been selling. I know he's probably going to score on three shots, but I have no choice but to nuke McKinnon. Are you kidding me? Um, and then we go to the diamond. Bobby in LA, you know Bobby's about to splooge in Los Angeles against the Angels tonight. I like the over in that game. I like his matchup against Detmers. And I'm not even really worried because he's probably going to go 0 for 2, 0 for 3 against Detmers. But once we get to the later uh, innings, He's hitting a fucking piss nuke. I'm calling it right now. Seventh or eighth inning piss nuke from Bobby Witt Jr. Write that shit down, okay? Uh, last leg, I couldn't decide which team is more rat shit offensively, the Twins or the goddamn Mariners in terms of strikeouts. They both strike out a fuck ton. I, didn't, I couldn't decide, do I want Gilbert K's or Lopez K's? And then I was like, wait a minute, there might be a combo square. And sure enough, there fucking is. Gilbert Lopez, 14 and a half combo square strikeouts. That's a lot of fucking Ks. Uh, and it's that high for a reason. I will say, though, do you guys fuck with these combo squares? Because yesterday, dude, I got to show you this. Threw a combo entry because I was bored as fuck. Did not, did not go as planned. Listen to how bad this one went. Swayman and Bob saves, missed by 25. Pasta, Matthew Kachuk, combo SOGs. How many shots do you think they combined for? I'll wait. Shugs bagel, we move. Miller, dry style combo, hook job. Stewart Skinner and Silov saves, missed by 25. Halliburton and Brunson combo assist, missed by five. The only thing I hit, I had a I had six man combo entry. The only thing that hit, Josh Hart and Miles Turner. Josh Hart, dude, is just the most consistent guy in the playoffs right now. You know he's getting 45 minutes. You know he's gonna get rebounds and assists. He's him. That's besides the point. The six man prize picks entry for today: Tatum rebounds and assists, J Dub fantasy, Oddings your saves, McKinnon shots, Bobby Witt fantasy. Gilbert Lopez combo strikeouts. That totals at six and a half. They're going to be striking everybody out. 500 to win 13,000, boys. Lock that shit in. I got to hit. I got to come through for the kids. Let's do a quick Q&A from Twitter. 
and we'll wrap this up. Oh man, my boy Chef T on the Twitter. Let me get a quick jewel rip. Chef T, if you were to go back in time and redo one thing in your life, tell us about the Russell Westbrook interview and how you would do it differently. <laughs> oh, Chef T, you're right, bro. If I had to go do one thing again, you know, that actually wouldn't be the thing I would do again. Even though it was as embarrassing as fuck to go on national TV and absolutely choke in front of millions of people, for those who have no idea, I was interning for a Thunder social media account when I was a freshman at TCU. I got an opportunity to attend media day after the Thunder signed Paul George and Carmelo Anthony, which in OKC, we never get free agents. So for us to get Paul George and Carmelo Anthony to come play with Westbrook was like breaking fucking news, ground shaking news. Uh, so I'm like, dude, I gotta go to media day. I get in my car as a freshman, I drive to OKC from Fort Worth. I have no idea what I'm getting into. And I get in the media room and I'm sitting there with basically all these fucking dudes in the media that I recognize from Twitter and ESPN and all, this, all the basketball shows. And I'm like, holy shit, dude, this is like a legitimate press conference like I see all the time. And I had no idea it was being broadcasted live on NBA TV, but me being you know, the alpha that wanted to fucking make a statement in the room um, and ask a question on my first day on the job, I was like, dude, if I don't raise my hand and ask Westbrook my idol a question, I'm never gonna let this shit down. And so I raised my hand, Westbrook's at the podium. I have a perfect question that I thought about this entire time, I'm ready to go. Everybody around me is doing all their work through in their head. They're not writing their questions down. And I didn't wanna be the rookie and write this shit down. I wanted to be like everybody else. Keep in mind, everybody else has fucking gray hair in the room and I'm literally 22 years old. Uh, and so I come up with this question. My question was gonna be, I saw you, Westbrook, and Carmelo working out all summer long uh, on Twitter, on these videos you guys are posting, but nobody had any idea that you guys were gonna end up being teammates. When did you guys know that you were gonna team up in OKC? That was gonna be my question. Carmelo coming to OKC just came out of fucking nowhere. And so I wanted to know, when did you guys know that you were gonna come and team up together? I get the microphone and I look at Westbrook and he looks dead into my fucking soul. Like he's literally sucking soul out of my body with this look he's giving me. And this is the guy I've looked up to my entire life. And I'm just looking at him like, uh, uh, I'm so sorry, I'm so nervous. And I fucking throw the microphone. Didn't know it was broadcasted live. Within seconds, it's on Bleacher Report, Barstool. ESPN, you name it, it was on their Instagram. Millions of views before I could even get out of my seat that I was sitting in. And thankfully it didn't show my face, but you could hear my voice and, and my friends, everybody knew it was me. It was, I was literally posting Snapchats, you know, holy shit, I'm at Thunder Media Day. Then 15 minutes later, that shit happens, they knew it was me. So embarrassing, uh, but I wouldn't redo that because that basically got me started in this industry of sports media. Um, and it made a name for myself as the nervous Westbrook guy. And it made the front page of the newspaper in Dallas sports, which was really awesome. Uh, but yeah, Chef T, W question, but honestly, I wouldn't redo that moment. The three biggest coin stealers in the MLB this year from Krabs. Um, I gotta go with the or Orioles, minus one and a half. I bet on the run line four times this year, and all four times they've won by one and all four times it was Cookie Craig's fault. So that's gotta be on there. Even though statistically they've probably made betters money, for me, they have not. Uh, I don't even know two other teams that have been absolute coin stealers. Uh, I can't think, oh the Astros, dude. Holy fuck, that team's dog shit. The Astros are awful, awful. They continue to steal my coin. And honestly, I might even put the Mariners in that conversation, the way they've been, they've been stealing my coin. Um, the Oakland A's, dude, they're coming for coins. The coin, they're coming for your coin. I'd say the A's, Orioles, um, what was that other team I said that's just been absolute dog shit? Oh, the Astros. Astros for sure in that conversation. Uh, w question from Krabs. What team or player has respected your coin the most recently? 
the avalanche without question they do not fuck around they respect coin like anybody else uh they're crazy they're insane i love the avalanche so much if they fucking tuck me in with this series uh they are the just the biggest coin respecters of all time which player has respected my coin bobby witt is an auto green square he's the acuna from last year it's insane um i would have to go bobby witt and the avalanche and we're on both of them again today so yeah that makes sense um i just want to know what prompted you to take madrid i was just getting the itch bro i was getting the itch if you could only place one bet for the rest of your life what would it be and why let me know in the comments your answer to that question. I'd love to know. The Dodgers minus one and a half. They're a fucking wagon. Say less. The wagon Dodgers or the Thunder? Probably those two. Um, let's see if there's any other questions and then we can wrap this up here. Any other questions? Name a worse pitcher other than Craig Kimbrell says calling our shot. I need something to throw in pool. Uh, I'm not going to do it. Dude, I, I've like ruined, there's a chair that I keep throwing in and it's like changing colors, boys. We can't be throwing chairs in the pool anymore. Calling our shot. Are you trying to get me pissed off today, man? A worse pitcher than Craig Kimbrell. Who's been tossing Turks more? Uh, I feel like I just don't have the right answer right now. Uh, but Kenley Jansen is up there with Cookie Craig in terms of Bots jobs in the in the extra in late innings, um, but right now I can't think of anything worse. There's got to be some starting Cal Quantrill. He's not even bad. He's been, actually been having a good year. He just struck out like ten dudes. Oh, top of my head, I can't think of anything else other than fucking uh, what's his name? I just said can't, Jansen. Uh, what else? What else? Two more questions. The Knicks don't stand a chance versus Boston, right? I don't know, dude. The Celtics sometimes crumble like cookies. I would love nothing more than to see the Celtics lose, bro. I would love that, but I don't think they are. They're literally minus money, minus 130 to win the finals right now. It's insane. Um, the Thunder, plus 600, lowest odds I've seen them to win the uh, championship since like 2012. So hype. One more question. One more question. Does it have recoil? Uh, obviously. Who's bouncing the thunder? Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to get into that because nobody is. Nobody is. Give me one more good one. What made me partner with Game of Silks, dude? I just like started to get into new avenues of betting. I got into poker. I'm into poker. Wanted to get into horses. Now I'm into horses, um, and I'm super excited about that partnership. So appreciate that question, Fantasy Racehorse. Give me one more good question. One more. Most crazy cover or player prop you've ever hit, thought you had no chance. Fuck, off top head, I can't think of it. Most crazy cover. Dude, I'm, I gotta get this off my face, bro. Uh, fuck, most crazy cover, I can't think of it right now, dude. I'm fumbling, I'm blanking, I'm sorry, boys. If you have the most crazy cover, I also wanna know that in the comments. Just tell me fucking everything in the comments, boys. Long yap sesh today, um, apologies, but I know you guys fuck with it. Again, I wanna see you guys watching the yap, so tag me on Twitter a picture of how you're watching the yap today, um, and let's make some coin and muck some goddamn clam, all right? I'm going to the Stars game tonight, I can't fucking wait, it's gonna be scenes. Hopefully the abs can go up to nothing, but uh, you heard the plays, you heard the prize picks entry, you heard the bitching and yapping, it's been a pleasure, let's have a day. Good luck on all your rat shit wagers, boys. Grab your yappuccinos. We'll be fucking. Peace.